Today I wanted to talk about Windows on ARM and Microsoft's Copilot Plus AI PCs because it's been about a year since those were launched, actually a little bit more than a year, and over that time I have been testing Windows on ARM and I have been taking a look at the Copilot Plus PCs with this, the Microsoft Surface 13.8 inch. Of course this was the model that came out a year ago with the Snapdragon X Elite processor. Now this isn't going to be a review uh, necessarily, instead this is a long term review or look at the laptop in at Windows and ARM. Windows and ARM, so I'm not going to go over all the normal things you would expect in a review. Instead, I'm just going to focus on the stuff that you can only tell after using the laptop for a year. Now, let's start with the durability of this design. Now as you can see, I have the black model and I think you can probably also see from this uh, from the video that you know it looks pretty good um, this is not showing too many fingerprints and I find that's generally true in my day-to-day -day use of this laptop so if you're worried about that with the black finish with fingerprints and showing dirt it will show them if you know and sticking your, your fingers in a bag of Cheetos, then you pick up this laptop, it's going to show them more than uh, wood silver, but I've been pretty pleased with that. But it's not all good news. So, uh, to show you some of the uh, less good news, let's switch over to the iPhone camera, okay? So, uh, I'm going to try and hold this up here, and it should autofocus in a moment, and we can take a look at those USB ports where you will see there is a bit of scratching and damage. Don't This here, I think, is just some lint. Don't worry about that. But yeah, on the USB ports, there's a little bit of scratching. Uh, I also noticed that there's some on the lip here. You can especially see here where there is some scratching around the perimeter. Now, personally, I don't care about that or think it's particularly bad, but if you're the kind of person that gets bothered by scratches on your laptop and you want a super pristine look, uh, then you probably are not going to be wanting to go with the black model. You will want to go with the silver model. I don't think that's a huge surprise there, but just so you know, over the long term, these black model Microsoft Surface Windows on ARM laptops are going to get some scratches. Now, with that said, I want to talk about the actual Windows on ARM experience. So, I've been using Windows on ARM with this Qualcomm Snapdragon uh, Elite processor for a year and my experience has been quite good overall. The laptop has been an excellent performer and it has also been able to open and run all my apps without any major issues whatsoever. In fact, and this may come as a real shock, but this is probably the most stable Windows laptop that I have used in recent memory. Uh, not what I expected, to be quite honest, but that's the truth. Uh, I, you know, blue screens of death I have not seen on this laptop whatsoever, or black screens or whatever. I can't keep up with the colors because they keep changing them. Whatever the color they are now, I have not been seeing them on this laptop at all. And it has also been able to open and run all the apps I use for work, which includes uh, Affinity Photo 2, uh, I sometimes use GIMP, uh, open source uh, uh, image editing software. Surprisingly, that also has an ARM version. Uh, Filmora Wondershare, or Wondershare Filmora rather, the video editing software, also has an ARM version and runs extremely well on this laptop. Uh, of course, all the Microsoft apps, which I do use quite a bit of Microsoft Word and Excel, they run beautifully on this. I tried um, Blender. I tried... Uh, I tried a little bit of Unity Game Engine that actually ran uh, just fine on this, despite some of the issues I'm about to talk with talk about with gaming on this laptop. Uh, Unity Engine itself actually ran and, and didn't crash. Admittedly, my project was small and I was just kind of messing around, but you know it seemed to run just about as well in the context of a small project as it did on my x86 laptop or, or desktop rather, or any of the x86 laptops I regularly review. So really just passing with flying colors across app compatibility. And the same is true with performance. 
I didn't notice any performance slowdowns. Now, my desktop is an x86 laptop with an AMD Ryzen uh, 5890X, I believe, processor. It's got 16 cores. Um, and, you know, this, doing things on the CPU, this almost keeps up to that desktop chip. Uh, and, uh, for example, on Wondershare from Wondershare Filmora, this will export almost as quickly as will that desktop, uh, which is quite impressive. Now, that's all very good news if you're worried about app compatibility. In general, with apps for work and enterprise, they're, they're going to do very well on this laptop. But there is a catch, and it's, for some people, going to be a very big catch, and that is the GPU and the game's performance. All right? Now, technically, the Adreno GPU, the Qualcomm Adreno GPU that's in this laptop should run extremely well. It should have performance roughly similar to about a Radeon, say, 780M, one of the better configurations of that integrated graphics. However, and I say that based off of 3D Mark scores for the versions of the benchmark that are uh, ARM compatible, right? However, when you actually get to real games, which are pretty much uniformly on the PC designed for x86 chips, you start to run into some problems. There's lots of slowdowns and crashes, lots of performance that's dra drastically worse than you would expect. For example, even games that are kind of older or easier to run uh, don't run very well on this laptop. Halls of Torments, if you haven't heard of it, check it out. It's a vampire survivors-like game with a Diablo sort of aesthetic. It's mostly 2 it's entirely 2D graphics, I guess, with some 3D um, particle effects. It, it, it does not run very well on this laptop at all, uh, which is, is amazing. I didn't actually know that that was possible to get that uh, game to slow down on a modern laptop, or at least I wouldn't have guessed, based on the way that it looks, but um, that that's the case. And, you know, Qualcomm talked quite a bit about gaming when these laptops came out. They said, hey, you can buy one of these Qualcomm laptops and you can run games on, you can run Baldur's Gate 3. You might remember that a year ago. You might remember the headlines. Baldur's Gate 3 will run on Qual Qualcomm Snapdragon hardware. And to be fair, it does. It does. But that scenario that they clearly picked and optimized for because it was a very popular game, still is a very popular game, that is not representative of the general gaming experience on this system. And I suspect that also extends to 3D workloads for work in enterprise, like I mentioned Blender. The thing is, I'm not such a heavy user and I'm more of a hobbyist in that sort of regard. So I'm not such a heavy user that I would probably run into those issues if they exist. And this really all, I think, comes down to the drivers and the x86 architecture, the fact that games and many 3D apps are not going to be uh, optimized for this at all. And by at all, I mean the fact that Steam and GOG and Epic Games still don't have an ARM version on Windows of their apps. Steam did this actually come out with, uh, they announced Mac OS ARM version since Apple Silicon is going to be the only supported hardware for Apple as of next year the next operating system updates for Mac OS, not this year, next year. But Steam in preparation for that is going to release ARM version of Steam for Mac OS. Maybe that'll carry over to Windows. But I think you can sort of see the breakdown here with Windows on ARM where if you're using it for work and especially for office productivity, great. Windows on ARM, awesome, go for it. Uh, uh, but. <laughs> Did, the, did you just see the, the, the iOS reactions? Uh, let's do that again. Great, Windows on ARM, go for it. But uh, otherwise, if you're going to do uh, entertainment, uh, and by that I mean 3D gaming, I mean obviously Netflix will run on this, but if you want to do 3D gaming, mm, this is probably not the laptop for you or any Windows on ARM Qualcomm Snapdragon laptop at this time. And I'm a little disappointed to say that Qualcomm's long-term support has not been, or long-term roadmap has not been that great in this regard. You know, Qualcomm Snapdragon uh, processors came out heavy hitting Windows on ARM with their exclusive relationship with Microsoft. That lasted about six months. 
The only Copilot Plus PCs you could get had Qualcomm hardware inside. Uh, but they haven't really followed up on that with a lot of big announcements or a lot of great driver updates. There's been some app announcements, but, but only a few. And I expect that they might have something more to say later this year. They're expected to release some updates for Qualcomm Snapdragon chips, but they might say more at that time about you know, updated roadmaps, better graphics driver, but it hasn't been something like, uh, you know, NVIDIA or AMD launching a new GPU, for example, where there's a big stream of updates. It's that they're very substantial. It's been kind of quiet here. Now, what about Windows? Okay, we've really been talking about the hardware so far. What about Windows? Uh, how is the Windows part of Windows on ARM? That is... <laughs> A little bit of a tough subject, I think, right now, because there's two two elements here. Let's talk about the AI first, because after all, this came out as a Copilot Plus PC with AI features, like Windows Recall, which you might remember is that uh, app that's baked into Windows that can take screen caps of your usage throughout the day, save them to a private environment, encrypted environment, although there's been some uh, back and forth about how safe that is. And then you can go back and search that later using AI to compress this data all, all down. And it's an interesting feature in concept. I said so when it came out, but it was massively delayed. And frankly, uh, on this laptop, it doesn't work very well. Many times I go to open it and it says it's not available. I don't know why. There's no real error. There's no error message really. It just says, hey, it's not available right now, sorry, come, come back later. And I flip things on and off, I try to come back later, it might work, it might not. That's been disappointing and that means I haven't really been able to get that into my workflow. If that idea of using AI to kind of create a, a search history that you can access to find things you've been working on in the past is useful, I wouldn't know because Windows, Re Windows Recall has not been working reliably enough or long enough to inform me. And, you know, most AI features across Windows fall into similar camps. The ones that are most useful are the Magic Erase for Photos app, <laughs> taking out backgrounds or a little, uh, you know, a little bit of lint on a laptop that I'm, I'm taking a photograph of. It works well for that. Um, I'm starting to see AI show up in the Windows settings for finding settings, and that's fairly useful. Although I'm not sure that these sort of Windows AI search things currently work any better than not AI acceler or not AI optimized uh, Spotlight on the Mac. Windows search has traditionally been pretty bad, and it's improving, but they're playing catch up there. So. There are also some apps that can use AI on this device. For example, Affinity Photo 2, that does uh, support using AI for, again, background erase. And by that, I mean on this device, which has, I believe, a 45 tops NPU in it. You can use it uh, for things like that in some apps, but I do say some. Uh, you know, I have even tried coding my own uh, AI apps for this device, and this was prior to Microsoft Build 2025 and prior to any of the recent updates, but I tried to make a transcription, transcription app uh, using OpenAI's Whisper, and in fact I did. I got it running on this laptop, but it ran on the CPU. I couldn't get it running on the, on the MPU, despite my best efforts. And admittedly, I'm not a fantastic coder at all. I was using AI to do most of the coding itself. So maybe I made a mistake, but so far as I could see from the documentation, it's it was pretty difficult to get that to run. And I think I'm not the only one because I haven't seen a huge wave of third-party apps embracing the NPU on this laptop. So if you're looking for AI features specifically, at the moment, you're probably better off still buying an x86 system with a beefy GPU and lots lots of memory on that GPU for any AI accelerated workloads. But of course, in that case, you're probably looking at a desktop or if you do get a laptop, it's gonna be very expensive and the battery life is gonna be very bad, which by the way, the battery life on this has been pretty good. Although I will say over time, not as good as a Mac. And I think the reason for that 
is that the although there are many many apps that have windows on arm support not all of them do the ones that don't still work but because they're going through that translation layer it seems to affect the battery life a little bit and so the battery life is not quite as good as what i've seen from a macbook air for example i generally get all day battery life on this but not a lot of charge left over at the end of the day whereas with a macbook air i would expect to go about a day and a half maybe more uh so overall my impressions for windows on arm on this laptop have been good i think that uh windows on arm is useful if you want to do office productivity or some uh sort of higher end productivity like photo and video editing that in less demanding video editing workflows <clears throat> what i mean by that these days is that if you're doing like you know a one four like 4k clip at a time and not a ton of effects on your video this will work fine because i did in fact edit videos on this machine and wonder share for wonder share for more for my computer gaming yesterday channel which is not super heavy on special effects and and, and whatnot oftentimes using lower resolution clips no problems there worked about as well as my desktop um slightly slightly more laggy scrolling back and forth but not in a way that would be in any way annoying i think for most people however if you want something that's going to be for gaming or high-end ai workflows despite the co-pilot ai uh billing of this laptop this isn't going to work for it it's really a cpu dominated laptop which is a bit interesting in 2025. You know, there's still a lot of apps that rely heavily on the CPU and a multi-threaded CPU to perform well. But of course, there's lots of apps and situations where a GPU or MPU being tapped, and particularly a GPU, would be helpful. So if you have apps that are primarily hitting the CPU, this laptop works great. If you have apps that are primarily hitting the GPU, not so hot, and you would probably want to avoid a Windows on ARM laptop. Now, ultimately my verdict is favorable here. I think this has been a good launch. I think it's hard to launch a, you know, to convert from uh, one instruction set to another, to go from x86 to ARM. Uh, it's difficult, especially with an ecosystem like Windows, where you have, in general, a lot less vertical integration than you do Apple with Apple Silicon and their own apps and their own app store. You know, Windows by comparison is just a real free for all. So I'm actually quite surprised that this has worked as well as it has, and that in general with the apps I use day to day, it's been flawless. But there's still room for an improvement, and hopefully we'll see that over the next few years. Anyway, that's my verdict on Windows for ARM and Qualcomm Snapdragon uh, laptops a year after their release. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.